Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Jacqueline Dorsey of Lean Frontiers and I'll serve as your host today. I'm excited to bring to you today a short webinar on Lean Accounting facilitated by Brian Maxwell. Please note that this session will be recorded if you want to refer back to it later. So for now, let me turn things over to Brian. Good. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, so good afternoon, everybody. I imagine some of you are not in the afternoon, but, uh, but it's afternoon where I am. So uh, we're going to just spend about half hour, 45 minutes here on looking at how can we make much more money from lean. You know, this is, there's all kinds of uh, ways to approach lean, isn't it? But the bottom line really is the bottom line. Can we make much more money as a result of the lean operations we're doing? And I just want to talk through some of the uh, issues related to uh, uh, to the accounting control measurement processes that uh, that will enable you to make much more money with Lean. So we're going to look at uh, two major issues. One is how do we calculate the financial benefits of Lean? You know the traditional standard costing and all that cannot give you the information that you need to understand the true financial benefits of Lean. And when I say true financial benefits, what I'm talking about is how much money is going to go in the bank. You know, what's the real, the real amount of money that's actually going to go in the bank. And then I'm going to look at uh, five ways to help you make more money with lean. So that's the agenda for the next half hour or so. Um, now the financial benefits of lean. What is the true bottom line increase in our cap profits and our cash as a result of uh, doing something with lean. Now I'm going to show the an example using a value stream map. So we've got on the left hand side a current state value stream map and that's the way we're working now. On the right hand side we've got a future state value stream map and that says when we've implemented these lean issues, whatever the maybe what the the improvements that we're planning to make in the next three months for example, um, what's going to happen financially uh, as a result of those improvements. Now we do that with a thing we call the box score. I imagine some of you will be um, familiar with a box score but uh, others maybe not. But the purpose of a box score is to show the performance of a value stream. And we look at it from three points of view. The first one is the operational performance measurements. So these would typically be operational numbers. You can see that some examples there. It might be productivity or on-time shipment. What's our inventory days? What's our first pass yield? You know, our quality uh, levels. These are the kinds of measurements that we would use to measure the operational performance of the business. So that's one part of the box score. But we couldn't say, well, if we just look at those operational measurements, we'll know the benefit of the uh, of lean to our organization because the second piece we need to understand is the financial results. And this is at the bottom left hand side, you can see this is a sort of mini income statement. So we'd want to look at um, what are the revenues, perhaps monthly or quarterly that we're working on this. What are the revenues and then what are the major costs? So in this case we've got material costs, labor costs, machine costs and then other costs. And from that we can work out what is the profit and what's the percentage return on our revenues. Now of course you will have a, 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 fully, a full income statement um, for your business but this is a, 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 a summary of this. Now this in uh, lean accounting we don't have the uh, traditional statements. We would have value stream statements so that each of the value streams that we've got set up within our organization they would have an income statement of their own showing the revenues, the costs, and, and the profitability. And so those simple value stream income statements are what we'd be looking at when we're trying to understand the financial benefits. Now the third piece though is the use of our capacity. Are we making good use of the time that we've got? This might be our people's time or it might be the time of the um, machines and equipment that we're using or it might be a combination of both but understanding are we making good use of our people's time and you can see there uh, the capacity analysis shows what percentage of our time is doing things we consider to be productive. Now productive would mean uh, making product typically or providing a service depends on what you're 
what your business is, but uh, it would be something which is directly serving the customer. Then we've got non-productive time. Now these are important things that we need to do, but do not directly affect the, the customers and the value you're creating for the customer. And then the third is the available capacity, and that's the amount that's left over after you've um, uh, taken the productive and the non-productive. Now, with those three dimensions, we've got performance measurements, we understand how we're making good or, or bad use of our capacity, and then at the bottom we've got the financial results. Put those three together, and the box score shows the true performance of the value stream. Now, if we want to understand the financial benefits of lean improvement, then what we're going to do is to, is to say, well, what is our current state? This is where we are now. And then what is the impact of the improvements that we're going to make? What's the operational impact? What's the financial impact? And how does this affect the capacity that we're using? And then you add those together, and this says the future state. Now, the future state is when we have implemented these, what is it, three Kaizen events, it says there. So over the three months, we're going to do one Kaizen event a month, and then the result of that would be uh, the future state based on the best information we've, we've got. Now, that <coughs> excuse me. Now you can see there that we've made pretty good improvement in the performance. Productivity is staying the same because we've got the same revenues and the same number of people, but the other measurements are improving quite well. When you look down at the bottom at the financial results, well, yeah, we're going to make some ex a bit more money. What is it, about uh, $20,000 more? But these are not radical improvements financially. So what's really happening? Well, that's where you need to look at the capacity. What's really happening is we're freeing up a, a bunch of capacity there. So when we're looking at what's the true financial benefit of lean, we don't just say, what's the current state and what's it going to look like in the future state because what we've really got to do is to say what are we going to do with that capacity and what's the financial impact of, of using the capacity that we've freed up. And so here, on this example here, there's only three columns but usually when you're doing this sort of analysis you might have 10 or 15 different columns because there's a lot of different options that you could make. but. Um, um, yeah, so I've, I'm jumping ahead, sorry. So, uh, so when and how do we use a box score? Well, in this webinar, what I'm going to do is to show you several ways of using a box score that would help you really understand the financial benefits of lean. Now, the box score is standard work for showing the performance of the value stream. Anytime we want to understand what's going on in the, in the value stream, anytime we want to make decisions of what we're going to do in the value stream, anytime we want to present what the value stream is doing, we would use this box score format in some form or another because it shows the, a balanced understanding of the value stream. It's operationally, financially, and capacity-wise, how are we doing? So uh, the first question is, um, you know, how much money are we going to save when we make these lean improvements? And that's a good question, but there's a better question. The better question is, what are we going to do with the capacity we freed up? And that's the piece that I want to uh, get into now. So uh, here's our box score, like I showed you before. Um, but now, what are the possible options that we can take with the changes that we've made as a result of the improvements that we've made? Well, one here would be to say, look, we've got a whole bunch of, of of available capacity here that we really don't need. We could move people out of the value stream and move them into some other part of the organization. Now, of course, in lean companies, when we make improvement, we would never lay people off. Um, and there's very pragmatic reasons for that. It's that uh, the people doing the improvement are the people who work in the value streams and the cells of, and the offices of the operation. They're the people that do the lean improvement. And of course, if you know, asking them to do lean improvement and then people get laid off, then they're not going to do the lean improvement. So it's a very straightforward thing here. So, uh, so if we don't need that 20%, well, we can take some of those people and have them work somewhere else. And if you then go down to the profit, that improves the profit quite a bit 
for that particular value stream. Now, of course, we've just moved the cost to another part of the company, but for that value stream, we've made improvement. Now, better would be to introduce some new products. In this example, where this is a, a real example that, uh, that I've taken here, um, what happened there was that they had uh, new products that they were planning to bring into the operation, and these new products, in fact, were not only lower cost products, because the company had done a lot of voice of the customer, and understood the customer's needs, so, so they designed products that were lower cost, but also had higher prices. So the profitability on these new products was really rather stark, and so that, uh, if you look there then, by introducing those new products and using the capacity we freed up, they've created a huge amount more profit. And really because they're introducing a great deal more sales without, in fact, introducing any more cost. Of course, there's material cost, but no, not other kind of cost. Now, if you don't have a, a kind of godsend like that uh, example, then there are other things. We can insource products that are currently outsourced. You know, we didn't have enough capacity, we outsourced some products, well now we've got capacity, we can move them in. So these are the sorts of things that we'd be looking for. When we do the lean improvement, it's not just the improvement itself, it's what are we going to do with the capacity that's freed up as a result of those improvements. Now there are lots of uses for these, back, uh, these box scores and we're going to take a look at that in, uh, in a couple of minutes here. But um, making much more money with lean then, we've got to be able to calculate the true financial benefit and that is the true bottom line amount of money, the cash going into the bank. Now, um, what we're trying to do here is to maximize the cash going into the bank and improving both cro profits and cash flow. And then these financial improvements will hit the income statement and the balance sheet of the company. So there's no um, playing with the numbers here. This is real bottom line calculations. So let's get into this uh, five different ways to make more money with lean. Um, you know, lean's very different. You know, the traditional financial measurements don't work. and That's why we use what's called lean accounting, a much simpler way to do this. And uh, we're going to look at these five different methods. Number one, we want to have timely information that everybody can immediately understand and use. You know, I, I wouldn't consider uh, information that comes out once a month and usually a several days or even a week or two after the end of the month, I wouldn't consider that timely. You know, you probably want to give some thought to what would be timely information that would be useful to us. And many companies, they do this weekly or sometimes twice weekly, or something that is a, a gives them information that's really up to date and something they can use. Number two, then, is better information. If we can eliminate the traditional accounting with all the variances and all that nonsense, then we can have better information that leads to better decisions, which in turn then lead to better revenues and cash. And uh, the other thing about this, if, if you've got um, timely and simple information, then everybody in the company can immediately understand it and use it. And uh, now, it's not necessary for everybody to know that information and, uh, and use it. They may not be relevant to them, but, uh, but, but we, we don't have to teach people how the accounting works because it's very straightforward. We've taken away all the complicated accounting things and put something that works by value stream and something that is immediately obvious to everybody. Number three, then, is measurements. Uh, so we've got operational measurements and financial measurements, and if we have the appropriate measurements, the right measurements, then those will motivate people for continuous improvement. Number four is we want to maximize the benefit, the lean improvement we're doing. You know, if most of you have done Kaizen events and lean improvement all over the place, this is really hard work. It takes a long time and it's difficult. We want to maximize the benefit that we're going to get from it. And then lastly, we want to have an accounting control and measurement system that is just in itself a lot less work. It takes away work throughout the whole organization. So those are the five areas that I want to uh, explore. So let's look at the first one then, timely financial reports that everybody can immediately understand. So frequent reporting, 
let's say I'm going to talk weekly in this case that if we have uh, weekly reporting then that's something that people can immediately understand because it's something that happened in the last few days and then we want what's called a plain English financial statement so plain English means something that anybody can immediately understand and use now if we have those two things then you can react much more quickly to the issues that are occurring you can also control your cost better the two reasons one is you're getting it more quickly more often and therefore you're measuring it more often and the other is it's something that's immediately understandable and no one has to uh, uh, have some kind of degree in accounting to understand what the numbers mean and if we have faster reaction and better control then that leads to immediate solutions and you know the, like I said before that traditional reports come out too late they're too complicated and also if you use standard cost it gives you very distorted information which leads off very often to bad decisions so uh, this is what we're after then it's tough to go forward looking if you're looking in the rearview mirror that's kind of what you have if you have traditional accounting uh, you're getting something weeks after it occurred and so you're trying to control it and improve it um, with, like a, a rear view mirror whereas what we're after in a lean organization is to have um, uh, information that is uh, much better information and something that you can actually use to look ahead and plan the future and make improvements so that's the, uh, the, uh, the, the thinking behind this so uh, let's look at these income statements this is a simple version of a traditional income statement and this is the sort of thing that we would find unhelpful in a lean environment now up here I've only got two periods here but these are the revenues now those are in most cases are real th real numbers you know this is the sales that we booked in that period but then we have this cost of goods sold now cost of goods sold in most companies would be the cost of the products that we sold but calculated based on a standard cost and then the gross profit then would be the revenue minus the standard cost and that would give this gross profit I haven't really any idea what that means at all you know these are just uh, uh, these are not real numbers these are just uh, numbers that have been calculated based on these standards how do we know that because below this line we have then got all a whole load of adjustments I've only put four in this example but purchase price variance material usage very labor variance and <laughs> my favorite the overhead absorption variance nobody understands that but we have to put all these kind of complicated adjustments and things now I know I'm talking a bit jokingly about this but but really this is pretty serious stuff because almost nobody in your company if you're using these traditional statements almost nobody in the company understands them now of course there are a few people in accounting who put these numbers together and are experts in this area of course so they would understand this deeply but most people really don't and then down the bottom here we've got uh, SG&A so these are other costs that are going on in terms of the uh, selling of the product and, uh, and so on and so down the bottom here we've got the net profit um, but uh, but in a rather complicated way so it would be interesting you know on the bottom right there I say you know how would you explain this to someone in production if you were a financial person pretty difficult really but so what we're looking for is what we would call a plain English income statement now the revenues at the top are the same because those are real numbers this two million dollars here that is the uh, revenue that we have booked from the orders that we have uh, taken in this period now it's not the amount of money going in the bank but it's the amount of money that we've uh, accrued at this point and then below that we've just got the real costs you know how much did we spend on materials how much on labor how much on support how much on machine what are all of the different costs and therefore what is the gross profit and now the reason I like this is that it's immediately understandable to everybody now in fact this uh, below we've got some other adjustments here but it's these ones at the top that everybody would see and use and uh, they would be able to say look what happened to direct cost this month you know it, 
oh, in, in this second period, it's jumped up quite a lot. Uh, what's happening there? You know, those and people are able to uh, anybody in the in the value streams would be able to see this information and understand it. Now, of course, for month end close, accountants amongst the audience for month end close, we're going to do some adjustments. We've got to show what the change in inventory is, and we've also got allocations from corporate and so on, and that gives us the net profit that we'd be reporting on a monthly basis. Um, but uh, but for the week by week um, management of the business, we've got real English, plain English information that everybody can immediately understand and use. And that's pretty important in a lean environment. So number two then, if we've got better information, then that's going to lead to better decisions. Now, better decisions in themselves should lead to better revenues and better cash flow. So that's the thinking here. If, we, if we've got something that everybody can understand, we've got something that's timely, then we can use that information to make better decisions. So the top left there, you know, real bottom line costs, real cash in the bank. Um, and we do this using standard methods. And the standard method is a thing called a box score. So, uh, so we'll go through the box score in a little more detail and you can see how that works out. Now this leads to better decisions, multiple what-ifs, all kinds of uh, different ways of looking at the, uh, uh, how we can maximize the benefit of what we're doing. And then we can understand the financial impact of each of our value streams and therefore the, the plant as a whole and the company as a whole and so on. Um, so no confusing accounting methods, no allocations, no overhead, no absorption, none of that stuff no distorted information, information that everybody can immediately understand and use. So let's look at this, um, an example of this. We've got a company, they get a request for quote from the customer uh, for 3,000 ProValve 602s. This company, this is a real company, they, made, uh, they make uh, valves that, are, uh, that are, are used in rather technical equipment. Um, now, the customer gives them a target price. They want to buy uh, 3,000 of these at $45 each. The company requires a minimum of 15% margin. Should they take the order? Well, put the numbers together here. Price is $45. Standard cost is $42.38. The margin is less than 6%. We have a, the company's goal or requirement is 15%. So should we take the order? The answer is no. We're not making enough money on this. So the sales guy is about to pick up the phone and tell the um, customer to get lost when the um, uh, purchasing guy says, not so fast, let's see if we can source this in a low-cost country and meet their needs. So sure enough, the procurement manager, they find a Far East uh, supplier, get landed cost of $33, and, uh, and let's see how this works. Well, the price, of course, is still 45 the cost is 30 $3. Now, the company recognizes that there are additional costs associated with sourcing from, uh, from uh, Far East companies, uh, uh, country rather. So they actually they add in another 7.5% to cover those additional costs. So they've got the total cost there of uh, $35. And sure enough, even with those additional costs, it brings us in at uh, a profitability of more than 20%. Uh, their need was a profitability of no less than 15%, so this is good. So they can say, yes, we can serve the customer, we can meet their needs. So uh, the uh, procurement manager is picking up the phone, ready to uh, explain this to the customer and uh, get the products delivered. Um, when, uh, when the, uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, what happens next then is that the, um, uh, the, the production people say, not so fast. We think we can make the capacity to handle this and we can do it in-house. Okay, so the company doesn't have enough capacity, uh, but they can hire two more people and two more machines, and that's going to give them the appropriate amount of capacity. So let's look at how that works. Now this time, we're not looking at the individual products. And this is any, any time we're doing lean accounting, we, don't, we, we would never make decisions based on what is the cost of a product and what is the changes we're making. We would always say, 
if we make a change of adding more orders or changing making Kaizen events and things, we would always be looking at how does it impact the value stream as a whole. So here's the value stream current state, and then, the, then we're saying, well, if we take these new orders, here's the revenues, and then here's the various costs, then we would put that across to the future state and say, can we, can we make good money on that? Now, if you look at that now, even though in a traditional way they'd be looking at um, at not, make, at not making the right amount of margin, they're actually going to make quite a lot of money as a result of taking that order. So uh, let's take a look at this. Um, here's the examples here. We've got the current state, and then if we, if we make a decision based on standard cost, nothing will change because we'll stay with the current state and we won't sell the product. If we go to a low-cost country, then we're going to... Um, uh, make a little more money, but uh, not a huge amount more. If we um, make it in-house, then we're going to make a great deal more money. Now, I'm only showing financial numbers here, and there may be all kinds of other reasons for, uh, for this decision to be taken differently, but from a financial point of view, um, we can make a great deal more money by making this in-house. In better than doing it low cost and certainly better than, uh, uh, than looking at it from a traditional point of view. So if we, if we look at the value stream impact, that gives us a much better information and leads to the best decision. And that's really what we're after. So let's look at number three here. Um, measurements. Now if we have the right measurements, that motivates people to go to continuous improvement. And of course, that's uh, fundamental in Lean, isn't it? We want to have measurements that actively drive continuous improvement. And when the improvement's made, what happens? Well, when we, when we make improvement, we do lean things. We reduce the batch size. We try to get to single piece flow. We bring our inventory down. We go to pull systems instead of push. Those are the things that we do. We go to good lean measurements, we go to lean financials. This, in turn, will motivate more lean improvements. And also, everybody can see, the, can see what's happened with lean, see the improvement that's occurring. Now, if you're continuing to use the traditional accounting, what I'm showing at the bottom, that doesn't look at these things. That looks at efficiency, looks at absorption, it looks at profit. And all of those things will go down if we look at the individual products. And the traditional accounting then is actively undermines what we're trying to do with lean. And that's why lean accounting is so important, because the traditional accounting is not just benign. It isn't just saying, well, it gives us the numbers and we can run our business. The, the traditional accounting, if it's used in the traditional way, will actively undermine what we're trying to do with lean. Number four, we want to be able to maximize the benefit of lean improvement. So we're doing Kaizen and other kind of changes here. And uh, the value stream accounting shows the true financial results. If we want to maximize the benefit of the Kaizen, if we want to show it on a financial report. We want to focus attention on are we creating more value for the customer, and we want to focus attention on growth. Lean accounting gives that information in a clear-cut and sensible way that everybody can immediately understand. Traditional accounting can't do that because of the way that it works. Um, and so what you have to do is either move to some kind of lean accounting or you've got to find some way outside of your traditional accounting system to come up with reports that show the correct results. Uh, what I'm suggesting is that the traditional accounting needs to go and be replaced by something much more appropriate for a lean point of view. Number five then is lean accounting itself and it's a lot less work. Now why is it a lot less work? Well lean accounting we work at a value stream level. We're not overly interested in the cost of individual products. Now of course we can calculate those if we need it uh, but our focus is on on the value stream as a whole because lean organizations work by value streams and therefore, we want to have a value stream manager who is responsible for the financial reports, or for, sorry, the financial results of the value stream that he or she is running. Now, uh, 
Therefore, we want to have a, a financial income statement at the value string level, and that would either be a detailed statement, well, it would be a detailed statement, but it would also show up on the, on the box score that I showed you before. Now, if we measure at a value stream level, that eliminates millions of transactions because our transactions are at the value stream level, not at the individual product level. Now, what, why is that good? We don't need variance reports. We don't need complicated allocations. We're providing financial information that's visual and, pe and people friendly so they can actually uh, understand it and use it. And it gives us better results. It improves our operations and, and our financial control. Now, of course, we can go to the detail when there's a need for it, but we don't need the detail on a day-by-day, week-by-week, or month-by-month -month basis because we're managing our business by the value streams. And the value stream, managing by value streams, gives you much better results. Yeah, see at the bottom here, you know, traditional accounting is not bad or wrong. Traditional accounting is, was developed by very smart and clever people in the 1920s, and they, uh, and they were uh, creating an accounting system that's used for top-down management, for managing f um, the efficiency of the operation, and for doing large volume mass production. That's what it's designed for. And it's not bad and wrong, it's just that it's designed for operations that are the opposite of lean. So I don't want you to think that I'm saying that traditional accounting is bad stuff. It isn't. It's, uh, it's just it's not the appropriate tool for what we're trying to do in a lean organization. Now, there's um, another thing here, too. Lean accounting frees up people's time. See, if you take away a whole lot of that detailed work, what's that going to do for us? It's going to give us a lot less work at every level, not just the people doing the accounting. Now, they will free up a lot of their time, but also the people that are using that in the factory or in the office or, or in the sales and marketing, and then the uh, various senior leaders and so on. It frees up time for all those people. Um, they will, it's, the information is closer to the work, which leads to better decisions. So we can do these, we can drive decisions down to a lower level in the organization. Why is that? Because we've got good information. Why is that a good idea? Because we, the people making the decisions are the people with the most knowledge and who are closest to it. Now, if you do that, that frees up, frees up time of the more senior people. And if we free up time of the more senior people, then that means that uh, they're doing less tactical work and they will have time available for more strategic issues. And, that, and uh, that will enable them then to be working on increasing the value to the customer, increasing the, uh, uh, the profitability of the business. So that's what we're after in terms of making much more money with Lean. Um, five ways. Traditional accounting doesn't work, not because it's bad and wrong, but because value stream accounting provides better information for lean organizations. But what's more, this isn't a one-time game. You just don't just implement it and then everything's better. Uh, this gets better and better over time. You eliminate waste, you free up capacity, then you can design, make, and sell more products, which in turn then enables us to eliminate waste and free up more capacity. So this, uh, uh, using lean accounting, much more money here with lean, where does the much more money come from? It comes from the the way that lean works, that we eliminate waste, we open up capacity, we make more product, we eliminate waste, we free up capacity. So it's unprecedented growth, this last paragraph here. This leads to unprecedented growth of revenue, profits, and cash. And then what do you do with cash? You use the cash then to build the growth. New products, acquisitions, new markets, and innovation through, uh, through a lot of uh, analysis and uh, and working on, on new things. So using lean accounting, creating much more money with lean, is an underlying um, method for the growth of, of the way that lean works. Made that sentence sound a bit more complicated than it is, but I think you get it. That what do we do if we've got, if we free up capacity with our people and we free up cash, that enables you then to, uh, to grow the business going out and, uh, and borrowing tons of money. So that's making a lot more money with lean. 
I showed about how do you calculate the financial benefit because that's the real issue and you don't do that just once now and again we've been measuring that every time we're planning on making an improvement or doing an improvement or making a change in the business or introducing new products all of the all of the things that we do we've got to be able to correctly understand the financial benefit you cannot correctly understand the financial benefit using a standard cost and then we went through five ways to make more money with lean how can we use the lean accounting to create a powerhouse of financial improvement in the business so that's making a lot more money with lean so uh, thank you for uh, listening and uh, do we have some time for questions Jacqueline <laughs> Um, we could probably do maybe one or two questions. Um, it doesn't look like we've seen, I don't see any that have come in so far. If anyone has one um, on your panel, there's a way you can submit, just type in a question and submit it there. Um, but I don't see any so far. Okay. Well, if there's questions, we'll take it. If not, thank you very much. And I'm. Uh, Glad to have spent a little time with you here today. Thank you. All right, we did get um, one. It wasn't really a question, but we got a request for other members of your team to see this. And um, to answer that, yes, we will make this presentation available. Um, either later today or tomorrow, we'll get an email with a link to the recording so you can forward that to other people on your team. Um, equally, equally, if you want something that goes deeper and is more focused, we could uh, do that also. All right, sounds great. So, well, anyways, Brian, um, thank you so much for facilitating our session today. Um, and then if you do want to learn more as well, Brian will actually be speaking at the Lean Accounting Summit, which is in San Antonio this year. It's going to be August 25th and 26th. If you want to learn more, please visit www.leanaccountingsummit.com. And we also want to offer a discount to everybody who's tuning in today. So if you want a discount off of the Lean Accounting Summit, you can use the discount code WEBINAR for 10% off the summit price. Again, that is WEBINAR for 10% off the summit price. So to wrap up, I wanted to remind you all that today's webinar is being recorded. So look for an email following our time together for a link to the recording. And like we were saying earlier, um, you can share that throughout your organization. So thank you, Brian. And thanks to each of you for participating in today's session. Goodbye. Good. Thank you. Bye-bye.